Yeah, it's time to talk cricket on the Sportsbank Zone and a lot to turn to, a lot to get through in this segment. Two Cricket West Indies regional competitions that continued earlier on Thursday. Day two action in the four-day championship coincided with round three of the women's T20 plays. Let's begin our review at Warner Park in St. Kitts and Nevis, where match one in the blaze saw Winwood Islands and Trinidad and Tobago Divas playing out a low-scoring thriller with the Divas coming out on top with a two-wicket win. El having elected to field, the Red Force Divas dismissed the windwards for 81 in 20 overs, thanks to 3 for 14 from spinner Shalini Samaru. Then despite wickets falling around her, 20-year-old under-19 World Cup representative Janaba Joseph held the TNT innings together with a runner ball 43 to give the Trinidadians their second consecutive win of the competition at 84 for 8 in 18.2 overs. In the day's second game, which took place at the same venue, Jamaica stretched their unbeaten run to three games following a six-wicket win over Barbados. The Barbadians, who elected to bat, were rolled out for 6-3 in 17.3 overs thanks to an impressive spell of 4 for 9 from Seema Chanel Henry. What a regional season she's having. The Jamaicans then cruised at the, to the target in 11.4 overs thanks to a 15-ball 21 from opener Rashad Williams, who is doing quite well with the bat for the Jamaica team as well, Mariah. Yeah, really, really a good day for the Jamaican Scorpions. And of course, the... Scorpions. <laughs> that, that's a team, right? Jamaica Scorpions? The female team? Yeah. Just Jamaica. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, well, I just assume because... Okay, fine. Sorry about that, Jamaicans. But yeah, really good stuff from the ladies, Stefani Taylor and company. I had Chanel Henry, an interview with her. I can't wait for our viewers to see it. On, in case you missed it, she's having the season of her life. She's in the best form. She's been contributing with both bat and ball. So really, really happy for her. And of course, in that interview, our viewers will get the opportunity to just get into her mindset and how she prepares for matches. You know, she believes. And I was actually saying it to my sister this morning. From that interview, you get the sense, Ricardo, that she believes that she's the best, mm -hmm. right? But it's in the most genuine way where, of course, because I don't want it to come across like, you know, oh, Chanel Henry thinks that she's the best and all of that. No. And it actually helps her game because she's an introvert. I got that from the interview as well. Mm -hmm. So she sits and she listens and she pays attention and then she makes changes. But when she gets on the field, she knows she's the best. She knows that she's capable with both bat and ball. She has also been doing brilliantly when it comes to fielding. So you get that from the interview, and I just can't wait for all viewers to see that side of her. Um, with regards to the TNT Red Force Divas, really, really happy for that second win. Um, of course, they have not been making it easy with the bat. As you can tell, a lot of really low-scoring matches. So what I get from the Divas is the bowlers bowl their hats out, and then when it's time to bat, y'all are struggling, so pick it up. You know, I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. Yeah, a lot of the teams seem to be struggling with the bat at this stage in the competition. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. It is final game pulls off in a few minutes at the same venue with Leeward Islands going up against Guyana. All right, let's move along now to the regional four day. That's the red ball format Guyana Harpy Eagles have taken control of their round five match against Windward Islands Volcanoes at the Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua following day two action having resumed the day without on 12 without loss the Volcanoes were dismissed for a measly 113 in 31.5 overs Isaiah Thorne ran through the Windward's top order with four for 38 to leave the Harpy Eagles with a first innings lead of 195 runs a 168 run partnership between between Teshner and Chandapal, 78 not out, and Tevin Imlak, 88 not out, then saw Guyana to close off play with an overall lead of 363. Yeah, mm, very much in control there. And in Trinidad and Tobago, the hosts, TNT Red Force, are trailing Barbados Pride by seven runs after getting to stumps at 103. At 104-3 at Queen's Park Oval, the Pride had earlier added 180 runs to their overnight score of 99. Kari Pierre was the pick of the TNT bowlers 
with three for 54, while Jonathan Drakes top scored for the Pride with 72. Amir Django, 30, and Joshua De Silva, 17, will resume batting for the Red Force on day number three. Over at the Sir Frank Warren Memorial Ground, the combined campuses and colleges were dismissed for 231 in 80.2 overs, responding to West Indies Academy's first innings total of 300. Ashmead Ned led the Academy's bowling effort with 4 for 51, while Demaria Richards top scored for CCC with 59. West Indies Academy then got to stumps at 44 for 1 in their second innings, an overall lead of 113 runs. And at Sabina Park in Jamaica, the hosts, the Scorpions, having resumed day two on 173 for six, lost their remaining four wickets for 48 runs to be dismissed for 221 in 68.2 overs. Carlos Brown top scored with 80, his first half century of the campaign, against three wickets apiece for Jeremiah Lewis, three for 34, and Rakeem Cornwall, three for 69. The Jamaicans fought back to dismiss the Leewards for 231, thanks to five for 51 from the off-spinner Pete Salmon before stuttering to 59 for four at stumps. That's a lead of just 49 runs, so they are effectively 49 for four, Mariah. Yeah, of course, a lot of some of the teams have a lot of work to do, but there's still um, a lot left in this competition. So, looking forward to see who ends up on top. Yeah, round four, we got outright results in all four matches, and it seems as if we'll get the same in round number five. Let's take a break on the Sports Max Zone. We still have interactive, and remember, we're getting out of here early today because at the top of the hour, it will be Jamaica's Reggae Boys against the United States of America semi-final action in the CONCACAF Nations League, and we have it live. 